This is the first module in our soot free and zero emission urban bus fleets technology transition curriculum. Today we'll be covering the benefits of soot free and zero emission urban bus fleets, especially in terms of their positive impacts in relation to air pollution and climate change. Here are some of the scientific terms and concepts that we will be encountering in this module. Uh, first, there's black carbon or soot, uh, which is inorganic elemental carbon that is emitted from combustion processes, including in diesel engines of buses, and it is a vector of other atmospheric pollutants, as well as a short-lived climate pollutant. Emission factor is a value that relates the quantity of a pollutant released into the atmosphere with an activity associated with the release of that pollutant. Greenhouse gases are gases like carbon dioxide and methane that cause a warming effect of the climate. Ground level ozone is an air pollutant that contributes to smog and causes respiratory health problems like asthma. Uh, NOx or nitrogen oxides are a family of seven chemical compounds. Um, NOx, especially nitrogen oxide, is an important air pollutant by itself, but also reacts in the atmosphere to, fr to form ground level ozone and acid rain. PM 2.5 or fine particles or particulate matter with a diameter less than 2.5 micrometers uh, are a major class of air pollutants that's regulated worldwide. Short-lived climate pollutants are chemical species that stay in the air for relatively short periods of time but have strong effects of uh, warming the climate and in our example black carbon is one of those short-lived climate pollutants. So the learning objectives of today are as follows. First, to understand the general health impacts caused by exposure to transportation emissions and the overall contribution of the transport sector to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. And to understand why diesel buses contribute a large share of health impacts from all transportation emissions. To understand the health effects and climate impacts of diesel engine exhaust. To understand the link between vehicles and fuels as one system and the definition of soot free and zero emission technologies. And finally, to understand how moving to soot free zero emission bus fleets can reduce emissions and mitigate health and climate impacts. Cities are centers of population and hubs of economic activities. Around the world, cities are growing. With more people living and working in urban areas, the demand for public transportation is also rising. At the same time, economic and transportation activities emit air pollutants that threaten human health and release greenhouse gas emissions that exacerbate climate change. As the first module in our soot free and zero emission bus technology curriculum, this module frames public transportation in the context of these two existential challenges of our time. It explains our scientific understanding of how transportation, diesel powered bus in cities in particular, have contributed to air pollution and climate change. This module defines the problem and identifies soot free and zero emission buses as a viable solution while setting the stage for later modules. Urban transit in the 21st century will have to overcome these two challenges while continuing to provide necessary services to people and communities. People around the world are feeling the brunt of worsening air pollution and the rapidly changing climate. In 2016, 91% of the world population was living in places with air quality levels above WHO guidelines. Worldwide ambient air pollution accounts for 29% of all deaths and disease from lung cancer, 24% of all deaths from stroke, and 43% of all deaths and disease from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Apart from these long-term health effects, air pollution is also related to acute infections. A recent study about the coronavirus pandemic in the United States unearthed a staggering finding. An increase of just one microgram per cubic meter of PM 2.5 or fine particulate matter air pollution could correspond to a 15% increase in COVID-19 death. Climate change is also affecting communities and people's lives in unprecedented ways. As of 2020, the global sea level has risen by 96.1 millimeters since satellite records first became available in 1993. 
it continues to increase at a rate of 3.3 millimeters per year. The temperature continues to rise and extreme weather events like prolonged droughts and increased more intense storms have become more common. California suffered one of the wor worst fire seasons in 2020 that ravaged hundreds of thousands of acres of land. The ultra intense Hurricane Dorian devastated the Bahamas, southeastern United States, and even Canada, causing at least $4.6 billion in damage. These are just two of the many more examples that continue to increase around the world. Transportation emissions have significant impacts on public health and on climate change. In 2015, close to 400,000 people around the world died from exposure to fine particulate matter and ground level ozone air pollution that originated from transportation sources. This is 11.4% of all PM 2.5 and ground level ozone pollution mortalities worldwide. Put in economic terms, PM 2.5 and ozone concentrations from global transportation emissions in 2015 resulted in 7.8 million years of life lost and $1 trillion in health damages. In 2017, transportation activities were responsible for almost a fifth of energy-related CO2 emissions. Moving the world's population from place to place on a daily basis takes a lot of energy, and unfortunately that means an equally huge amount of emissions. These two graphs show a consistent trend of how transportation consumes energy and emits greenhouse gases. Transportation is the third biggest source of total CO2 emissions and the top source of CO2 emission from oil consumption in 2019. As mentioned earlier, transportation activities release emissions of certain chemical species that can damage public health and cause climate change. Most notably, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, and black carbon pollution from vehicles cause the most damage to human health while carbon dioxide is released as a combustion product from internal combustion engines used commonly in transportation, causing the most air pollution and climate change. Black carbon emissions have effects on both climate and health, and let us now dig a little deeper into a particularly damaging type of engine technology, uh, one that's most commonly used for public transit buses, which is diesel. Urban transit buses are most commonly powered by diesel engines. A recent UITP survey found that global operators use diesel power, including diesel plus additives and biodiesel, as the most popular engine option by a large margin. The same survey also revealed that most diesel buses use older technologies that only comply with outdated emission standards. Um, in other words, those are pre-Euro 6. We will take a closer look at different emission control technologies and emission standards later in this module and in subsequent modules. Buses as a class of diesel vehicles also have a disproportionately large contribution to air pollution. According to an ICCT study in 2019, they account for 4.28% of total diesel vehicle stock, but are responsible for more than 12% of all black carbon emissions 11% of NOx emissions, and 12% of PM2.5 emissions. Among these, diesel buses that only meet pre-Euro 6 emission standards have been responsible for much of the total emissions for each pollutant. A lot more can be done to modernize and transition bus fleets to cleaner technologies. So why exactly are diesel engines dirty? Let's return to the basics for a minute and revisit the reason why diesel buses emit air and climate pollutants. In the engine, diesel fuel is burned to generate energy for the bus. Complete combustion of diesel, of diesel fuel creates carbon dioxide as a product of this reaction. Sometimes incomplete combustion takes place. This incomplete combustion of diesel generates black carbon or soot. Other impurities in the diesel like metals, sulfur, and organic additives may also be released into the atmosphere. What's worse, when buses run on dirty diesel that has high sulfur content, pollutants from engines can't be removed because the uh, sulfur in diesel makes after-treatment devices ineffective. 
diesel exhaust is a mixture of different chemical species, including particulate matters, aromatics, ultrafine particles, metals, etc. Each individual chemical species and their related mixtures are a health concern. First and foremost, diesel particulate matter has an abundance of elemental carbon or soot. Black carbon soot can be a carrier of chemical co constituents of toxic substances that people breathe in. And exposure to black carbon is associated with adverse health outcomes, including asthma and coronary heart disease, and is found to increase cardiac, respiratory, and total mortalities. Empirical data from Bogota's bus rapid transit system, which runs on pre-Euro 6 buses, also showed that people who ride those buses are in, in effect exposed to black carbon pollution. For residents of Bogota, negative health effects of black carbon can be greatly reduced if exposure to black carbon emissions from buses is minimized. And soot-free buses would offer this type of solution. Next on the list of diesel pollutants are nitrogen oxides or NOx. They are a key contributor to outdoor air pollution in the form of uh, ground level ozone and secondary particulate matter formation. Long term exposure to these pollutants is linked to a range of adverse health outcomes, including disability and years of life lost due to stroke, heart diseases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lung cancer. Uh, in the EU 28, there were as many as 28,000 annual deaths from diesel NOx emissions in 2015. Estimates were 26,000 in India and 31,000 in China. To make matters worse, there are excess diesel NOx emissions that occur even under the most stringent diesel emission standards, which is what the orange and pink bars in this graph show. The idea of excess NOx is that diesel vehicles can emit more NOx in on-road driving conditions than during laboratory certification testing for reasons like engine calibration, equipment failure, inadequate maintenance, uh, vehicle tampering, etc. In the EU, 4,600 people are estimated to die from excess HDV diesel NOx emissions in 2015. Developing countries like China and India, the health cost of excess diesel NOx is even higher with less stringent emission standards found in diesel vehicles. Last, last but not the least, the World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, has concluded that there is sufficient evidence between humans and the carcinogens of diesel engine exhaust. In other words, diesel engine exhaust does, in fact, cause lung cancer. Apart from the health effects of diesel and transportation activities mentioned above, black carbon is also a short-lived climate pollutant that has a strong warming effect on the atmosphere um, by absorbing light and radiating this energy as heat, which contributes to atmospheric warming. Black carbon also changes the reflectivity of ice and snow, which increases the amount of energy absorbed at the Earth's surface that increases surface heating and further melts the surfaces needed to maintain Earth's energy balance. In terms of warming effect, emissions of black carbon and methane, another potent greenhouse gas, will together contribute up to 0.5 degrees Celsius of global warming by 2050. The Climate and Clean Air Coalition has set a global sulfur strategy which will accelerate the worldwide adoption of ultra-low sulfur diesel and cleaner emission standards, thereby reducing transportation emissions of black carbon. A 2018 ICCT study finds that Implementation of the global sulfur strategy would be able to reduce 15.4% of the 0.5 degrees Celsius target identified in the 2011 UN Environment World Meteorological Organization assessment of short-lived climate pollutant mitigation plan. If dirty diesel engines are a problem, could we solve it by simply having cleaner engines with more advanced after-treatment technologies? Not exactly. Vehicles and fuels work as a system. Cleaner fuels enable engines equipped with more sophisticated after-treatment technologies. For example, wall flow diesel particulate filters, which have up to 99% efficiency in removing particulate matter, 
only work well with ultra low sulfur diesel with a maximum of 10 to 15 parts per million sulfur content. Zero emission buses also need infrastructure support, uh, just like internal combustion engine buses need clean fuel. Electricity and hydrogen that power zero emission buses can come from different sources. And if the electricity generation or hydrogen production is from renewable sources, then the well to wheel life cycle emissions of greenhouse gases for buses will be much lower. So we define soot free buses as any fuel and vehicle combination that meets emission levels that for particular matters set by Euro 6 or US 2010 emission standards. The term soot free is technology, um, technologically neutral. It, it includes compressed natural gas and conventional diesel engines. Zero emission technologies like hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric powered buses are also soot free and so are Euro 6 hybrid powered buses. In the next module, we'll go deeper into the different soot free and zero emission technology options. The right combination of fuel and engine technologies can be the ultimate solution for diesel transit bus emissions. As the graph of emission factor comparisons show, um, diesel buses compliant with Euro 6 emission standards can achieve significantly lower emission levels of pollution, including black carbon, particulate matter, and NOx. And all are pollutants of concern, both to human health and climate change. An ICCT modeling study in Johannesburg, South Africa shows that if the city transitions away from its current bus procurement strategy, which is to buy Euro 5 dual fuel diesel CNG buses to one that has an increased uptake of battery electric buses accompanied by Euro 6 diesel buses, then the emissions of greenhouse gases, particulate matter and NOx will all decrease significantly in the short to midterm. Battery electric bus technologies can virtually eliminate all particulate matter and NOx emissions, especially with a decarbonization of the city's power grid. So this shows the power of a fleet-wide technology transition uh, of an entire transit system. So that concludes our first module in the curriculum on the benefits of soot-free and zero emission urban bus technologies. Here is a summary of key takeaways from the module. Urban transit buses powered by dirty diesel have an outsized contribution to health and climate problems in the following ways. Um, that diesel exhaust is a human carcinogen, particulate matter, black carbon and NOx in diesel exhaust have detrimental human health effects. And black carbon is also a short lived climate pollutant that exacerbates climate change. On the other hand, soot free and zero emission bus technologies are a solution because soot-free and zero emission buses lower the greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. And the definition of soot-free includes Euro 6 compliant diesel, gasoline, CNG, battery electric, and hydrogen fuel cell technologies. You can find references to the papers and articles mentioned and cited in this module along with additional resources here. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me at y.share at the ICCT.org. Finally, research and development of this curriculum is supported by the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, CCAC, the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety International Climate In Initiative, IKI, and Partnering for Green Growth and the Global Goals 2030, P4G. Thank you.